In the other big news this week is Pakistan. The United States apologized to Pakistan this week for firing missiles into its territory. And this weekend, Pakistan reopened a border crossing used by NATO and U.S. supply convoys headed into Afghanistan. Relations between the two countries are deteriorating as the United States blames Pakistan for not doing enough to take on extremists in the border region with Afghanistan. In a moment, I'll talk to the former Pakistani president, Pervez Musharraf, who was a key U.S. ally after 9-11. But first, with new terror plots surfacing, ABC's Nick Schifrin reports from Pakistan's Swat Valley. The rugged, difficult terrain that runs along the Afghan-Pakistan border is the epicenter of global terrorism. It's here in North Waziristan that German, British and Arab militants plotted attacks in Europe, where Faisal Shahzad received bomb training, and where a terror group led by Jalaluddin Haqqani plots attacks on U.S. troops in Afghanistan. All are largely left alone by the Pakistani military, and so the U.S. relies on its own aerial assaults, unmanned CIA drones, as many attacks in the last two months as in all of 2008. And recently, helicopter strikes from Afghanistan. Those attacks have killed hundreds of militants, but they have also devastating side effects, sometimes killing civilians and Pakistani troops, enraging the Pakistani military and public. That anger led directly to this, a campaign to destroy trucks carrying U.S. supplies destined for Afghanistan, including one during a BBC reporter's stand-up. And that anger at the U.S. is transferred onto an already unpopular government here, blamed for being too close to the U.S. and blamed for a weak response to the country's largest ever natural disaster. This was Upper Swat two months ago. Here is the same valley today. Ask anyone here, and they'll say the government has abandoned them. Shah Bacha runs a clothes shop. He's lucky to make $3 a day. Since he has to shut early, there is still no electricity here. Has the government helped you at all? The government is only concerned about themselves, he says. They keep conditions bad so they can pocket foreign aid. The U.S. spends billions to help the poor here, and try and repair its reputation. But you don't see much evidence it's working, and you don't see much support for going after all those militants who continue to use Pakistani soil to plot attacks. Nick Schifrin, ABC News, in the Swat Valley, Pakistan. Joining me is former President General Pervez Musharraf. He's in self-imposed exile in London, but now he's planning a political comeback. Mr. Musharraf, thank you for being with us. It's my pleasure. I want to start by asking, since you were a key U.S. ally, particularly in the post-9-11 years, the U.S. has put out a very damning and explosive uh, document accusing the Pakistan of not doing enough to go after the terrorists, to go after al-Qaeda and other militants. Why is that still happening nine years into this war? Pakistan has always been accused of uh, not doing enough. But I totally disagree with this statement. Pakistan is doing enough. Well, Mr. Musharraf, clearly the United States thinks that it's not doing enough in northern Waziristan in, uh, to go after, for instance, uh, the Haqqani network, to the extent that over the last several days and weeks it's stepped up by a massive amount, its drone strikes and other attacks across the border into northern Waziristan, where a lot of these terror plots are being hatched. There are many, many fronts that we are battling against, and I think we should be proud of that army which is battling against Al-Qaeda against Taliban, against uh, Talibanization spreading into settled districts mm -hmm. and they want to defeat Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Now how they intend doing it, what is their plan as you are saying that they are not doing enough in North Waziristan, so at least say that, at least say that they are not doing enough, enough in North Waziristan, but don't generalize the statement that Pakistan army is not doing enough. They've suffered over 2,000 casualties. What do we mean by not doing enough? Another criticism by the White House is that the a spy agency, the ISI, continues to give sustenance and support to the Taliban. How can that be happening, again, nine years into this war and after billions of dollars that the U.S. is pouring in to the Pakistani government and its military? 
I take very strong exception to these statements which have been going on maybe since 2004 because of a misunderstanding of ground realities and which I used to be saying after defeating the Taliban after 9-11, I always was of the view that we need to change strategy, we need to go in for deals. So my strategy always was to strike a deal, strike a deal to wean away Pakhtun from the Taliban. This is and my uh, views are vindicated now when everyone is talking of going into some political agreements with moderate mm -hmm. Taliban. Why is Pakistan still a place where terrorists can plot and try to execute attacks against the West? Yes, there is. There are problems that Pakistan is facing, that we have extremism in our society, we have uh, Al-Qaeda and Taliban. But what we, need, we are not understanding are what are the causes behind terrorism is always a symptom. We should know that. So we, we must understand problems and uh, the, uh, what hurts Pakistan and every leader in Pakistan is certainly when they are blamed. Everyone in the world starts blaming them. While we are suffering casualties, we are suffering hundreds of people dying from bomb blasts and suicide bombs and yet we are the rogues. So I mean, <laughs> what is the issue? Let us let Pakistan alone and let us let us deal with the situation. It's criti uh, critical and okay. it is in our own interest to deal with it. We don't want the United States to help us. We, uh, it is critical for us. Again, despite the billions of dollars that the U.S. is pouring in and considering Pakistan a strategic ally, the latest poll says that Pakistanis have a deeply unfavorable view of the United States. For instance, 17% of Pakistanis only have a favorable view. And when asked whether the U.S. is more a partner or an enemy, 59% of those Pakistanis polled say that the U.S. is an enemy. How do you account for that? Well, yes, I mean, that, those are the ground realities. Which, uh, if you've taken the poll, there is a... There is a uh, odd situation that it's a catch-22 situation. If you today ask Pakistanis, are you, uh, would they like to uh, defeat Taliban and Al-Qaeda and terrorism and extremism? I think vast majority will say, yes, we do. But when you ask them about uh, United States and the coalition forces in Afghanistan or the attacks across the border, certainly 100% will oppose it. So this is because of... The, what they have suffered historically and what is going on and uh, a lack of understanding on both sides uh, of the ground realities. Mm -hmm. You've decided to form a political party and you say to go and contest the elections back in 2013. A lot of the military are basically saying that they don't want you back and a lot of people are saying that your time has passed, you were yesterday's man. Why do you want to go back and contest the elections? I see the condition of Pakistan and I see that Pakistan is suffering and in this darkness that prevails in Pakistan, I don't see any political party which can show the light. I don't take views from others that I am a past man or anything. I understand better what is the ground reality instead of listening to people from abroad who don't know Pakistan. You are abroad and you are in London and you made your announcement uh, about your political future outside of Pakistan. Why aren't you there? Why aren't you going back right now? I have to create an environment of popularity, of political clout, and then I will go. I will be there before the elections. Mr. Musharraf, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.